During the final days of World War II in 1945, a Zero fighter landed in Odo Island, a repair base for kamikaze planes. After inspection by the mechanics, Tosaku Tachibana informs the pilot, Ensign Koichi Shikishima, that no issues were found. Shikishima, having lied about a malfunction to save his life, becomes defensive. Another mechanic later expresses a wish for more soldiers like Shikishima, as the war seems already lost. Shikishima then notices several dead deep sea fish in the surrounding waters. That night, an air raid siren signals the approach of a dinosaur-like creature the Odo Islanders call Godzilla. Godzilla destroys the guard tower after being illuminated by its searchlight. Shikishima and the others take cover in a trench. Tachibana uses Shikishima to use his plane's 20mm gun against Godzilla, but Shikishima freezes in the cockpit as the monster stands before him. The repairmen, panicking, open fire on Godzilla themselves, enraging the creature and leading to a brutal attack. Godzilla throws the plane, knocking Shikishima unconscious with the explosion. He wakes up to find only Tachibana alive, who blames him for not acting. On a troop ship returning them home after Japan's surrender, Tachibana gives Shikishima photos found with the slain men. Returning to his Tokyo neighborhood, Shikishima finds it in ruins, his home reduced to rubble. His neighbor Sumiko Ota, recalling his kamikaze assignment, berates him for his cowardice. She has lost all her children to American bombings and tells him his parents met the same fate. He remembers a letter from them, urging him to survive. Days later, Shikishima builds a makeshift shelter from the debris. At the black market, a woman being chased for stealing blankets leaves the baby in his arms. Though he considers abandoning the baby, he decides to keep her and soon encounters the woman again. She had been waiting nearby, impressed that he didn't abandon the baby. She follows him home, where he reluctantly cooks for them. When asked about her husband, she reveals she isn't married and that the baby isn't hers but was adopted during the Tokyo air raids. She introduces herself as Noriko Oishi and the baby as Akiko. With her own family gone, she falls asleep mid-conversation and spends the night. The next day, Ota mocks Shikishima for taking in Oishi and Akiko, accusing him of trying to play the hero too late. She softens up upon learning Oishi isn't Akiko's mother, giving them a bag of rice. In March 1946, Shikishima returned home to Oishi and Akiko, announcing he had found a well-paying job detonating unexploded mines in Japanese waters. Though Oishi is horrified at the danger, he sees no other way to prevent them from starving. At the dock, Shikishima is surprised to find he'll be serving on the Shinsei Maru, a small wooden boat. Former Navy Technical Officer Kenji Noda explains that its wooden construction is intended to avoid triggering American magnetic mines. Shikishima then meets Captain Seiji Akitsu and Shiro Mizushima, the latter being too young to have served in the war. They set out on the water, and Akitsu explains their work. A cable suspended between their boat and the Kaishin Maru allows them to clip mine wires and bring them to the surface, where they can be detonated from a distance with machine gun fire. Shikishima quickly proves to be a skilled marksman, taking over from Akitsu. When Shikishima reminisces about flying fighter planes, Mizushima expresses regret that the war didn't last longer so he could be enlisted, prompting a sharp rebuke. That night, Shikishima has a nightmare about his encounter with Godzilla on Odo Island. As Oishi confronts him, he questions if he died in Odo Island and everything since has been a dream, to the point that she has to forcefully throw him off her. In July 1946, an American nuclear test at Bikini Atoll, part of the Operation Crossroads, mutated Godzilla. The Shinsei Maru continues its minesweeping work while Oishi raises Akiko at home. Shikishima soon affords a motorcycle and major renovations to their house. With his new crewmates visit for dinner one night, Noda takes a picture of Oishi. The men assume she is Shikishima's wife and are surprised to learn of their living arrangement. When Akiko calls Shikishima her father, he tells her not to, alarming his crewmates. They encourage him to accept that he has found a family, but he angrily refuses. In March 1947, Oishi takes a desk job in Tokyo's prospering Ginza district, explaining to Shikishima that she wants to support herself and not keep him from finding a wife. When he asks about Akiko, she says that Ota has already excitedly offered to take care of her while they're at work. Meanwhile, Godzilla destroys multiple ships, including several American military vessels, as he swims toward Japan. Despite the danger, the US refuses to intervene, concerned that a military buildup in Japan would damage relations with the Soviet Union. By May 1947, the Shinsei Maru and Kaishin Maru were dispatched to find Godzilla, searching near the Ogasawara Islands. They come upon a massive American ship ravaged by Godzilla. After debating the cause of the damage, Shikishima spots deep sea fish on the surface and shares his experience on Odo Island, which was covered up after the war. They learn he was a kamikaze pilot. Mizushima is horrified that the Japanese government expects them to fight Godzilla in their small boats. Noda explains that their job is to delay Godzilla until the cruiser Takao can arrive from Singapore. Their orders suggest using the recovered mines as weapons and forbid them from disclosing the mission, to Akitsu's disgust. After collecting two mines, 
No doubt commiserates with Shikishima about the war, saying he also struggles to sleep. Shikishima is haunted by his fear of Godzilla but hopes to avenge his comrades in Odo Island as a larger deep sea fish surfaced around them. They urge Akitsu to flee, but he is determined to face the monster, not wanting to see Tokyo destroyed again. Godzilla emerges, seeking the Kaishin Maru instantly, and Akitsu takes their advice to flee. Godzilla chases after them, unfazed by the first mine they detonated against his dorsal fins and their machine gun. Noda suggests detonating the next mine in Godzilla's mouth. When the detonator switch fails, Shikishima uses the machine gun to explode it. The blast destroys Godzilla's left eye and a large part of his cheek, but the ensuing wave injures both Shikishima and Mizushima. Godzilla appears dead in the water, only for the wound to regenerate before their eyes. He rises and roars at them, but is interrupted by the guns of Takao. Godzilla attacks the cruiser, tearing it apart with his claws. The ship's guns unload on Godzilla again, causing him to fall back into the sea. However, Godzilla swims under the Takao and obliterates it with an explosive heat ray. Godzilla surfaces amid the ashes and smoke, wounded but triumphant, and continues swimming toward Tokyo. Shikishima wakes up in a hospital after the battle, greeted by his crewmates. He wants to alert the public, but Noda informs him that the government is still covering up the creature's existence to avoid the panic it would cause. At home, Shikishima tries to dodge Oishi's questions about his injuries but eventually tells her everything, ending by saying he shouldn't have survived. She canters that everyone who survived the war was meant to live, echoing her parents' final words to her. Wracked with guilt, he again wonders if he died in Odo Island and has been dreaming ever since. She holds him and reassures him that he is still alive. The next morning, Shikishima watches Oishi tenderly feed Akiko soup, then turns to his parents' altar and asks if he can finally let go of the past. That same day, Godzilla effortlessly passes through a mine blockade and enters Tokyo Bay, making landfall in Ginza. At home with Akiko, Shikishima hears the news on the radio as sirens blare. Oishi's train is forced to stop when Godzilla throws another train car into its path, and she sees the monster for the first time. He advances towards her train, trampling countless civilians and biting down on it. Left dangling above a river, she lets herself fall, narrowly avoiding the car as she drops it. Godzilla continues his rampage, destroying the Nippon Theater and killing several reporters broadcasting from a rooftop. As he approaches Oishi, she freezes until Shikishima comes to lead her away. Tanks positioned in front of the National Diet building fire on Godzilla, but he withstands the assault to the dismay of nearby civilians. They brace themselves as his dorsal fins begin to emit a blue glow. In a split second, he fires a blue atomic heat ray from his mouth, striking the tanks and causing a nuclear explosion that flattened most of the surrounding area. Noriko pushes Shikishima to safety but is swept away by the shockwave. As Godzilla roars at the mushroom cloud and black rain falls, Shikishima screams in grief amidst the ruins of Ginza. Godzilla returns to the sea, leaving an estimated 30,000 civilians killed or injured and 20,000 houses and other buildings destroyed. The area of his rampage is roped off due to high radiation levels. Following a memorial service for Oishi, Ota struggles to comfort Akiko while Shikishima sinks further into despair. Staring at the pictures of the slain Odo Island mechanics, he believes they have yet to forgive him. Noda informs him that a group of private citizens is formulating a long-shot plan to destroy Godzilla. Shikishima attends a meeting with Mizushima, Akitsu, and many former Navy personnel. Tatsuo Hota, an ex-destroyer captain, explains that Japan has negotiated the return of four destroyers, albeit stripped of their weapons. To the surprise of his crewmates, Noda himself explains Operation Wadatsumi, which he devised. He proposes luring Godzilla above the deepest part of Sagami Bay and tying canisters to Freon gas to him, which when ruptured, would lower the water's buoyancy and forcibly sink Godzilla to a depth of 1500 meters, crushing him with sudden pressure change. He is unable to guarantee this will kill Godzilla to the dismay of many attendees, including Shikishima, who nearly leaves. Noda elaborates that the operation requires two destroyers to encircle Godzilla and wrap him in cables attached to the canisters. He reassures them with the backup plan. Giant balloons provided by Toyo Balloon to be inflated under Godzilla, rapidly bringing him to the surface and destroying him via explosive decompression. Representatives of the company dramatically exhibit one of the balloons in action. Hota apologizes for asking the men to go into battle again, but neither the US nor the Japanese government is willing or able to defeat the monster threatening their country. Some attendees leave, but most stay. One heartens the others by saying that a plan with a chance of success is better than the odds they faced in the war. The crew of the Shinsei Maru goes out for drinks, where Noda predicts Godzilla will return to Japan within 10 days. Considering Tokyo part of his territory, to lure the monster to the trap point, he plans to use acoustic minesweepers to play recordings of Godzilla's roar. Mizushima suggests using the destroyers to pull Godzilla to the surface instead of balloons, but Noda dismisses him, saying the monster is too heavy. He admits that his plan could fail in many ways but challenges them to come up with a better one. Shikishima finally speaks up, offering to help with the luring operation if Noda can produce a fighter plane. 
Akitsu asks if Shikishima has a death wish and grabs him, saying he can't avenge Noriko. He missed his chance to marry her, which would have kept her out of Godzilla's path. Shikishima explains that he wanted to, but his war wasn't over. Noda invites Shikishima to a hangar, where the local fighter Shin then sits. This anti-bomber fighter saw limited use before Japan's surrender. Left in storage, it's now inoperable. So Shikishima recommends Tachibana for repairs. Unable to locate Tachibana, Shikishima sends inflammatory letters to his former comrades, prompting Tachibana to confront him. After an initial confrontation, Shikishima explains his plan to fly the Shinden, loaded with explosives, into Godzilla's mouth to kill him. Tachibana agrees to help and gathers a team to begin repairs. Despite Noda's pessimism, Akitsu reassures him that the volunteers are motivated. Godzilla's imminent return is detected, prompting Toyo balloon employees to offer help to finalize preparations. Noda orders the volunteers to spend the night with their families, reflecting on the wartime use of kamikaze planes and hoping for zero casualties in Operation Wadatsumi. Shikishima leaves the letter and slips out early. While Tachibana explains modifications to the Shinden, Shikishima's resolve is strengthened, motivated by memories of those who wanted to live. As the operation begins, Godzilla attacks sooner than expected. Shikishima takes off and successfully lures Godzilla to Sagami Bay. Two unmanned destroyers absorb Godzilla's atomic breath, depleting his energy. The remaining destroyers encircle and tie Fion canisters around him, pulling him underwater. When Godzilla surfaces, he is heavily mutilated but still alive. As Godzilla prepares to attack, Shikishima flies into his mouth and ejects just before the plane explodes, destroying Godzilla. The operation concludes successfully, and the crew returns to a jubilant crowd. Shikishima finds Oishi in the hospital, injured but alive. She asks if his war is finally over as they embrace. Unnoticed, a veiny pattern resembling Godzilla's dorsal fins appears on her neck. Meanwhile, a fragment of Godzilla's flesh begins to regenerate in the depths of Sagami Bay. One of the most common criticisms of giant monster films is the focus on human characters over the monsters. The typical solution proposed is to remove human characters entirely, but this overlooks the intended purpose of monsters in storytelling. They are symbolic embodiments of ideas or themes. In Godzilla Minus One, it addresses this critique by deeply involving the audience in the characters and their narratives. When we care about the characters, the threat posed by the monster becomes real, and its destructive impact is more than mere spectacle. In this film, Godzilla symbolizes the psychological havoc of war on survivors. He represents Japan's collective trauma after World War II and serves as a physical obstacle for Shikishima to confront and ultimately heal from. Rather than dominating the narrative, Godzilla is integrated into the storyline. Complementing Ryunosuke's poignant performance, every aspect of the film is meticulously crafted, from the acting, writing, cinematography, directing, special effects, and of course, Godzilla himself, none of which falter. Thank you very much for watching the whole video. And if you have a movie or TV show that you want us to cover, just comment it down below. We'll make a video of it in the future. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out our playlist for more recaps.